So I'm just packing up for Man B Horse and I've had quite a few requests as to what I currently feed the horses so I thought I'd do an updated feed routine um, as I pack. So I'm going a few days in advance, my parents live not far from Man vs Horse but they live up the mountain so actually it's going to still take us about two hours from my parents house because I don't want to go over the mountain pass because it's very windy, it'll take a long time in the trailer, probably longer than going the long way around. So. Anyway, I'm taking Estrid and Tizzy because I'd like to take Estrid through the hills and it's a good opportunity for her to, you know, go out and about and travel a bit more, see a bit more. So this is my mobile feed routine. So I have this big bucket and then inside here it's like Russian dolls. Is that PC to say Russian dolls? You know the dolls that fit inside each other? We have a big scoop. We have travel supplements and a travel cup. And then basically we just continue down through different sizes of bucket until you get to the smallest one. And basically that is what I use to put everything in for a weekend away. If I'm going for more than a weekend, this is four, four days, five nights, um, then I actually pre-make the feeds into bags and then store them in. But if I'm going away for like a few days, then I will just empty this in. So this is what the horses are fed at the moment. So we've got Bailey's performance balancer for all the nutritional needs. That is kind of like the standard, what they get every day. That is baseline. Then we've got the endurance mix, Bailey's again. Um, and this is what Estrid is on as her in-work feed um, and the levels that both of them have of their in-work feed, not the balancer, change depending on how hard they've worked. So if they're on a rest day, they'll have like a baseline amount, but if they've done a hard session, they'll have a bit more. Then because Tizzy can't deal with like the little bits in this because of her jaw and her teeth, She's on the Ease and Excel cubes, again from Bailey's. That's like her baseline and she gets topped up with that if she's in training, which she is. Then we've got the um, British Horse Feeds Fibre Beet, which is sugar beet um, mixed with alfalfa and I think oat fibre as well, but it's got lots of protein in. And then finally, we've got Speedy Beet for kind of extra fibre. I don't actually feed that in the summer because they don't need it but that will be reintroduced as the grass starts to dwindle and they eat more haylage so let's begin filling up our little tiny mobile feed room so racing so we will have a full scoop for breakfast so race day breakfast post race day and then vet gate she can eat as much as she wants so we'll need at least that much then i'm gonna need uh thursday woo, friday sunday because saturday is race day and then estra's going for three training rides so one starting to take shape but we'll go through all that when it's finished but I've got most of the stuff all packed now so it's just a case of getting the ponies hitching up loading up four hour drive home two grey ponies loaded up go man versus horse whistle some hill district come on then We 
made it! Yay! Four and a half hours later. Um, it's the morning after. They're over there in the field somewhere. Um, Maeve gave me a little bit of a stressful journey because she started making an odd noise. I took it to the garage this morning. They were so nice to actually um, have a look at it because they were super busy, but she wasn't doing it and I've taken her for a spin this morning she's not doing it so now I'm really nervous about actually getting to Man vs Horse because it's about a two hour journey from here and I might be being really paranoid and being really extra but I think I'm going to get my brother to follow us in another tow vehicle because <laughs> I just I just want to get there and I've got another ride next weekend so I really don't want her to break down oh anyway we're here, we made it, the horses are fine. Um, and I'm now going to unpack and then repack, fill up all the stuff for the race, um, make sure we've got everything. So, oh, it's quite windy, I hope it's not mainly. Oh, wind you can hear, let's go around the corner. So this is a little bit unusual in the setup. So the vet gate is really far away from where you park. The start and the vetting at the start is really far away from where you park. So. We've got a few unique um, carrying devices set up, ready to get water to where we need it. Um, but first of all, let's unpack Maeve and Libby the trailer and then sort everything out and repack it all. This is it. This, is, this has been in preparation, I would say decades. My mum used to race in endurance, actually sorry mum, like a good two decades ago. And when I was little, I couldn't carry as much, or when I was littler, I wasn't as strong as I am now. So dad, devise this backpack. Let me give you a, uh, a good shot. Put you on there so you can see. Look at this bad boy. <laughs> so that when the crew points were a little bit further away from the car, he could carry everything um, by himself. So it's been resurrected for Man V Horse because um, the vet gate is quite far away from the parking. So I'm just gonna sort out what goes in here um, and fill some water up. Oh dear, I can't believe it, it's so funny. Very effective though. Dry sugar meat we're not gonna need. Sugar meat water we need two of those. We need two of those. Apples and carrots, maybe at the end. Um, we'll need two electrolytes. Nice. So the sugar beet water, and the plain water for those. Are the six water containers we need. Don't need another electrolyte. Actually, no, that's the no pile. Crew car feed we will need. Oh, we've actually still got feed in the crew car feed. And top that up. So, we need six sugary water, and we'll get these all a clean. Okay, so as well as Tizzy's buffet hydration, um, I've got this big bin, which is about two gorilla tubs worth, um, that takes, I think it's 80 litres, or 75 litres of water. So rather than carry lots of buckets, I'm going to take one bin and we're going to fill that bin up, put the lid on, um, and what we're going to do then is we've got these little buckets that will then dip in the bin, pour over Tizzy alongside all of the slosh bottles. So hopefully we're like condensing the kit. So um, we've got the finish, the vet gate, and then the crew car in the car just in case. The finish needs two buckets, two sponges, one sweat sweeper, the cloth and the wash. And then that will go, big one in the crew car. Um, where? Then the vet gate will have two of the little buckets. We don't need any sweat scrapers for the vet gate because we want to keep the water on. And these buckets literally going to just dunk in there. But I always have sponges as well just to like wipe down the face and get any grit off under the saddle. Um, those can go back in to storage. 
and then we've got a sponge and a sweat scrape from in the crew car. This is like the crew car backup just in case stuff. So I'm just gonna clean this out because it's been a while since we've done a vet gate and this has been in storage so it needs a bit of a clean. This water pressure is sad. Okay, so we also need to fill up water containers. I've got three going with mum and dad in a wheelbarrow. Um, so they'll need to take these six, I think. But I, mum and dad are going to the vet gate um, over the mountain. So they'll be there first. And then Will and Dan are coming in the crew car. So I'm going to split the stuff that is in the vet gate between them, just in case something goes wrong. And then at least there's something going to be there. Um, so I just need to fill these up and then configure it so that we have maximum amount of stuff in the wheelbarrow but it's not too much and then the rest of the stuff will go with Dan and Will. Um, so yeah, look at the little flag on there as well, that's adorable. It's going to put heart rates up, isn't it? <laughs> right, let's fill these up. This is what Mum will be taking. Thanks Mum. And this is what Dad will be taking. He hates going for a walk with uh, any backpack at the best of times, so I'm quite surprised he has volunteered to take this. But yeah, so he'll have the slosh bottles, the feed, and the buckets and sponges and mum will have all the water and water containers so yeah this is going over the mountain road straight to the vet gate so it won't get caught up hopefully behind all the other crew cars runners and horses and stuff and we'll have someone there if we get there if we start oh dear okay so we're just going to put this over by their car and then we will continue let's load these up we're going to put three of these in every electrolyte bucket. And then the sugar beet bucket. So normally, wherever I am and my crew are, we have the crew car. So I have all the spares and anything that I think I would need in the crew car, but that's not gonna be the case. So I'm gonna pack like a crew bag that they can carry to the vet gate just in case. Um, so if we get vetted out and it's raining, I want her to have a waterproof um, and also a cooler rug. It might be absolutely boiling and we don't need these, but you know, I want to look after my whistle. So it'll go in the bottom. Um, then I'm going to put in a bit of bale of twine and some duct tape because if we can't fix anything with them, then it's not going to be fixed. Um, things that I can't fix with bale of twine and duct tape and I need to carry on are probably my stirrups and Tizzy's girth and they're easy to take so we'll pack those um a lead rope for the vetting so although my re reins can be used as a lead rope always handy then the stethoscope to do the heart rate the heart rate monitor that will go with the watch that i'll be wearing very, actually those two can go there because we'll definitely need them then boots so tizzy's going to be wearing boots i'm going to put in where's the Look, this one's pal. There we go. So, spare boots. I almost forgot about me. I'll have a water bottle on my saddle. So I'm going to pack a Lucozaid and a Y food for me. Tizzy will have her vet gate food. I think that's all we need. Rugs just in case. Things to repair stuff. Stirrups and a girth because we can't really repair them with anything else. If my saddle fails then we're screwed basically and I'm not doing it bareback. Um, spare boots in case these ones get super gritty and dirty. That'll do. Heart rate stuff. Cool. Everything else, I mean it's only 35k. This is over preparation at 
its finest. <laughs> but fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Now the place where we tack up and vet is nowhere near where you drop off the trailer. I think it's like 0.7 miles away. So I'm actually not going to put my tack in the trailer. I'm going to put my tack in the van so it can be driven to the vetting. So I'm going to do that now. I want as little as possible to remember to do on the morning. So if I do it all now, where it's meant to be, all I have to think about is getting there, which is a major deal, and getting to the off the trailer, giving her a walk and taking her somewhere. Everything else will be done. The only thing I'll have to do before leaving the trailer is set up the end of ride crew stuff. Adol. I think we're all packed. Adol's there. Bit gate bag. There's one water in here because the boys are mainly going to be taking Tizzy's drinking water to the vet gate. So they've got like two things, well one thing in each hand. And then one thing I love about this van is I have hooks so I can put my bridle in there. I think the crew prep is done. It is the day before man versus horse. Um, I'm just coming into the field to grab Tizzy so that she can have a bath um, ready for tomorrow. Also need to put some overreach boots on Estrid. Um, they're up there. Say hey ponies. Sadly, there are no longer any horses at my parents because the rescue pony bumper and my dad's horse Zarina were put down last year. So she's gonna be by herself tomorrow and while I bath Tizzy. So overreach boots just to try and minimize the risk of her um because she's going to run around she's going to be silly for a bit and then she'll be fine um just to minimize the risk of her taking her shoes off or hurting herself or sliding into a fence and pulling a shoe or whatever um so yeah we're going to do that first and then we're going to take tizzy out for a bath and then um i think kate and Nessie have already set off, so we're just waiting for them to arrive. They're gonna stay overnight here and then we're gonna go together to Manby Horse. I'm so excited. The last time me and Kate rode in the same race, I think was for the European Championships in 2012. So it's been a long time. Um, and we're both on our championship horses. I crewed for her when she did her senior debut on Nessie in the senior, obviously, um, World Championships in 2019. So. Hi guys, the horse flies here are awful. We don't have any in the Midlands yet, but here, blimey. Estrid actually has lots of sheep either side of her in each field, so I'm actually hoping she'll just make friends with some sheep um, in, in lieu of any actual horsey friends. But she's actually quite good. So normally she does yell a lot, runs around a bit, and then about 10 minutes later, nothing and she's just stood still you can hear the sheep yelling at her see, see she's she's not exactly exerting herself are you estrid oh tell a lie <coughs> Actually, I know that they, they're herd animals, they like friends, and actually, personally, I wouldn't keep a horse by itself like long term. But I actually like them to have alone time and independent time because it's good practice. Tizzy, don't wind her up. It's good practice for rides and not getting attached to other horses and taking them out by themselves. Joe, you know, it's part of their job. So, right, let's take the zebra off. Normally I would pat the whole tail to stop her pooping on it, but the horse flies are so bad I thought that was mean. So I've given her tail to swish with still, but I've patted that bit so it gets out of the way because she always poops on her tail. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 blacks. Unlucky for some, but I my first ever ride number on Tizzy was number 13. Um, and 
all her big competitions ever since, I've tried to do 13 plats. I don't space it out, I just, I know her mane well. Um, and if it is, I'm not superstitious, so if it isn't 13, it doesn't matter. But when I get to 13, I feel like, mm, yes, this is a good one. Doggos. Dee, will this be your first crewing assignment? I know, Sausage, you'll still be the number one crew dog. Hey. <laughs> Look who's here! <laughs> In their own little corral! Nessie's here! Do you want me to call the one oh, Rad, yeah. um, How long did it take? Six hours! Six hours, Nessie! Six hours! I know! We only have to do 35k tomorrow, we'll be well shot. I think this is the furthest I've been for <laughs> kilometers. <laughs> Dan has made us all lasagna for tonight, so we're having our own little pasta party and we shall talk tactics, vet gate, vet gate routines and logistics of tomorrow because we're cool like that. Before we eat and have lasagna and talk tactics, it is time to feed the ponies. Um, I do give a bigger feed the night before a race, I kind of gradually increase um, over the week, a bit like a human would kind of carb load. Um, here they come in the sunshine. Can you even see them from here? Probably not. I'm really excited. A little bit nervous, but really excited. It's so nice that Kate's here too um, and that we're kind of experiencing this together for the first time. She is the reason actually that I entered in the first place um, because she was like, let's do it. Let's have fun on our veterans and do something different and new and slightly less pressure than FEI. So, well, I don't know, actually, I feel quite a lot of pressure right now. Hey, girlies! Right, Estrid, which one's yours? Estrid, here's your dinner. Wizzle butt, the dinner of champions. Here you go. Horse flies, I tell you. Awful, aren't they? There we go. Our very own Manby Horse Pasta Party. Everyone's got their jobs. Will, what are you doing? Lasagna. But, but I'm, cl I'm clipping on from the right hand side. What are you doing? At, at Club Tropicana. No, what are you doing? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm right hand side saddle off onto a tub and cooling the right hand side. Mum, what are you doing? At Drinking Bud. No, um, what are you doing in the game? <laughs> <laughs> Taking boots off and checking feet. Dan, what are you doing? Dishing up lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> Heart rate monitor and then left hand side watering the third day. Excellent, guys. What are you doing? I'm riding. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. This is the first time crewing, isn't first it? Time. So, learning from maybe the best. Well, maybe the best. Uh, I'm Dur oh, Durant Kissing was there, so there's the best. Oh, yeah, your yeah, mum and dad are so, uh, so, we're actually going to leave you on a cliffhanger, and next week, hopefully, we'll be man versus horse.